And the last thing is that actually, as I mentioned before, when you look at the planets, uh, they look uh, no different than um, uh, very bright stars. So the ancients couldn't really uh, 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 distinguish uh, between the two, except for the fact that planets uh, were wandering around uh, every now and then by executing their retrograde motion. Uh, but what he, he found uh, that all planets, when you point a telescope to a planet, then you see that it actually has a visible disk, that it has a finite size. But when he pointed the telescope to the star, they always appeared to be point-like, which tells us that they appear to be point-like because they are so far away from us that we cannot see uh, their disks, okay? So that tells us that the planets are much closer to us and the sun than the stars, okay? So that implies that uh, the planets are much closer to us than the stars. All of this he did in 1609. And 2009 was celebrated as the year of the astronomy in honor of one of the greatest astronomers ever, Galileo Galilei, using the telescope for the first time in 1609 to observe the night sky and come up with these fantastic and long-ranging discoveries. Um, he also published these things, and that was the big threat. You know, if you have a guy here and there who kind of realizes that well, what you've been telling him is wrong, you are not worried. But if he starts publishing it in the form of book or otherwise, that's a problem, right? So he published uh, uh, his observations in, in, in a book called uh, The Star Messenger. And he didn't endure himself with the church. Uh, uh, either way, he published uh, a pamphlet called The Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World, uh, uh, World Systems. And there was, it was uh, 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 formulated as a dialogue between two people, one uh, effectively uh, uh, advocating heliocentric model and the other geocentric model. And that one, advocating geocentric model, uh, was uh, named uh, Simplicus, right? Like a simpleton. And basically, it embodied uh, the character of then Pope Urban VIII, okay? And that didn't go well at all. And he was threatened uh, 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 by the church, never. Uh, uh, was subjected to all the torture by uh, Inquisition. Uh, what they were doing at the time was uh, what uh, was called in Latin uh, 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 tortura verbis, meaning verbal torture. Uh, uh, accused would be shown all the devices that could be used on him and uh, you know, your imagination can be actually worse sometimes than the real thing. You can anticipate in what kind of uh, uh, pain and agony you are going to be, and that causes you to kind of uh, 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 go along, right? So that was done to Galileo, but, uh, uh, um, uh, and he backed off. He had to back off for various reasons. Nevertheless, his, his book, the Starry Messenger was eventually published. And he, for that reason, he's considered to be the founder of the modern scientific method. And I'll explain why. First, he built the apparatus to do uh, the observation or the measurement. In his case, it was telescope. Then he actually did the observations with it. And finally, he published the results. These three 
ingredients are essential to what uh, uh, we call the scientific method. Scientists often spend a lot of time designing their equipment with which they want to do a particular measurement. So that is one stage. In the case of a theoretical work, like what I do, you often have to design a computer program that is going to do the calculation. So that would be uh, this part of building the apparatus. Once you have the apparatus, then you actually have to do something with it. You have to do the observation in the case of Galileo, or do the measurement, or in the case of theoretical work, you actually do the calculation of whatever you want to find out. Once you've completed all of that, I mean, it's nice that you know uh, what the results are, but you have to communicate that to the rest of the world, in particular to your peers, so that they can replicate and check your results, right? So you have to publish the results. The results, scientific results, that are not known to anybody else but to the, uh, uh, a discoverer are meaningless. They make that one person happy, but uh, they don't advance the knowledge of the humanity. So these three steps uh, are the key elements of scientific method even today. And he was the first one to actually uh, execute all three steps. And hence, he's considered to be uh, the founder of the modern scientific method. 